is my summary of a philosopher who's very widely read, but perhaps not so widely understood. Still the most cited author in the citation index. So, still almost the most widely quoted author of modern times. He's the great French postmodern thinker, uh, Michel Foucault. And this is my summary of his book, The Will to Know. I'm going to do it in an introduction, a conclusion, and three premises. Three arguments, really. Think about Foucault, though. If you've never come across him, there's something you need to know about him. He's famously, famously slippery. Don't try and understand until you get to the end. He really doesn't mean you to. The will to know. <laughs> Very, very, very funny that we prattle on endlessly about our repression <laughs> and have found a new way to flirt. But I'll tell you what is darker. Over the last 150 years or so, don't you think we've lost sight of our identity? We've confused it with our sexuality. Tell me who had the hot spot and I'll tell you who you are. We have taken then the great, great welter of our hopes, our dreams, our desires, our abilities to catch each other's eye and force them into a binary opposition of genders rooted in biology or in these enlightened times a chocolate box selection of legitimised, recognised sexualities with what result? We look upon our desire as our fate we consult out, we look at the bones or we cast out the bones of our lusts fearing what we might find we consult doctors magical and medical to tell us who we are we have taken then the wild tempest of our souls we've sexualized it and we've medicalized the result argument two and how do you understand the kind of power involved in this this is not the noisy power of the state it's rather that quiet power the power we have as individuals as we're all caught up in each other's lives and have a power to guide and to be guided the power that got you out this evening the power that waxes and wanes over the course of our life and that can never be separated from our knowledge so that how we act and how we understand it hook up in some strange union a constellation that echoes between that unspoken, hidden, and yet always, always present abyss that lies between us all, that is our real difference. This is three. Under the single banner of sexuality, over the last 150 years or so, four great themes have gathered. First, there has been a hysterialization of the female form. Girls were checkmated back into their bodies, their bodies saturated with a corrosive, all pervasive sexuality. And that sexuality knocked into myths of motherhood, apple pie, holy sister, seductoress. And anyone who didn't conform, they're weird. But don't worry, we can treat them. <laughs> Two. There has been a gathering fear about what children are doing late at night under the bed sheets or with each other in the old attic. A fear amounting last to paranoia of childhood sexuality and even more of an adult's reaction to it. A fear that opens out into endless worlds of repression, suppression, regulation and all too tawdry exhibition. Three. There has been a medicalization of normality. The perfectly natural processes of birth, death, of, sorry, of conception, birth and aftercare have been turned into an excuse for yet another trip down the clinic. Prying, cold metal instruments, prying hands and leading questions. Four. There has been a veritable proliferation of perversions. Tell me who you fancy, animal, vegetable and mineral, and I'll have a Latin name for it. And if I don't, I'll make one up. <laughs> But what is really at stake in this? In all this ludicrous hubbub of activity? Well, mill me, baby. Maybe, for the very first time in all of human history, mankind is learning something. He is learning what it really means to be a living member of a living species. He is freeing himself from the dominion of death and the politics of death that was so brilliant at arranging occasional gruesome executions. He is enmeshing himself in a politics of life. A politics that is going to hold him from the cradle to the grave. One more. And this is my most storytelling.